In our series, The World After Coronavirus, today our guest is Karen Antman. Uh, Dr. Antman is the provost of our medical campus here at Boston University and also the dean of our School of Medicine. And I'm going to ask her what she thinks the future of medicine might look like in a post-COVID world. I think that there might be several different ways that medicine will change and will never go back. The first, I think, is that telemedicine is here to stay. We switched to it because we had to. Immediately, the insurance companies, realizing the risk to their patients, uh, agreed to cover it. That in and of itself would never have been done before. Uh, And we had large numbers of physicians basically taking care of their patients to the extent that they could online. We have discovered that telemedicine is just terrific. I think this is just going to make a major change. I think that we also discovered that a lot of this work can be done at home and probably more efficiently. I think that academically classrooms are going to be more online. So I think that that's going to be a change. And then if we're really, really lucky, the American public will insist that we have better public health and put more money into public health and prevention, and we would then need less money into acute care. All across the world, we have seen a outpouring of respect, of gratitude for medical professionals, and rightly so. What do you think will be the lasting impact of this moment? We saw the same thing with um, 9-11. I was in New York City at the time. I think that the respect continues even to this day from even that uh, particular incident, Uh, but it's not the same as it was at the time. How how do you see any of this impacting the future of medical education? This class of medical students are going to be more likely to become infectious disease docs, um, public health docs. I, I can't imagine that this won't have an impact on what physicians in training choose to be. We already have new courses on telemedicine and we have new courses on emergency management or disaster management. This is an opportunity to see how you manage um, putting up field hospitals for for hurricanes and uh, outbreaks. What are the type of policy impacts that could or would or should happen because we have lived through this crisis? We hope that the American public may realize to a much greater extent how much their health depends on the health of the people around them. This is a very clear message that we need to be taking care of uh, all Americans in this country. We have this to a great extent, extent in Massachusetts. We don't in many of the other states in the country. If you had one wish, what would you hope we would learn from this moment? I firmly hope that we see medical care as a right and not as a privilege and that everyone in the United States would get access to health care um, and that we would have public health like many other countries, many other developed countries already have uh, that's well organized and a system. It's incredibly inefficient. The overhead in the United States is 20 to 30 percent in most other developed countries it's three to 5%. And in Medicare and in the VA, it's three to 5%. We don't need to be spending all the money on the overhead. We need to be spending on actual care and even more important, prevention. And what would be your worst fear? The worst fear right now is that this particular infection and other infections, because we are seeing um, more emerging infectious diseases around the world, that we will see pandemic after pandemic, and that we won't learn the lessons of this one, that we need to actually very rapidly uh, contain it or it goes global. The lesson is that we really have to have a global plan for for these incidents because they will happen again. Uh, And if we don't learn that lesson, uh, it, it would be a real shame.